seen this. There we go. Hey, city gender. In the chat room, 26 years old from the Philippines. Woo! What's going on, everybody? Time to get into this broadcast. Uh, sorry for a little bit of late start. Uh, did you guys all get the uh, notification that went out with on YouTube? Because some people have been telling me they haven't been getting their notifications. And if you haven't gotten your notifications, what you need to do is go right now and go into where it says subscribe and you need to hit the notifications and then turn them to all because YouTube will from time to time, uh, they'll just go through and unsubscribe people from notifications, things like that. So if you want to make sure you get all the broadcast, do yourself a favor and go make sure you have your notifications turned to all. We're in the red room today. You guys like the red room? You know, the two major scenes I have was the party room with the flashing lights or the choreograph with the songs. Then I have the candlelight room, which is, you know, when I, here's my candlelight. Candlelight in you. See the candlelights flickering. You know, I got a fireplace look, but, you know, in July, it's a little warm for the fireplace. And then we go and we go to the red room. This is the, this is a general intermission room, and then I have my uh, my ambiance room. Ambiance, my ambinance. Okay, but most stuff gets done from the red room. All right, thank you to everybody that's uh, been showing up to watch these shows. Thank you guys so much. Of you made this, I guess one of your go to spots on the weeknight. So. Let's keep it going. You know, the funny thing is, as an image consultant, which is what I am, I'm a lifestyle coach. For those of you who don't know, I spent 20, almost 25 years in corporate America in business to business sales for 22 years. And fifth, almost 15 of that was in advertising and marketing, advertising, marketing, and PR. I've had a broad career in corporate America. I started off in engineering, strangely enough, different story. But the net net of it is my, from as far back as I can remember, as an only child, I was acutely aware of how much I did not have the normal social skills my classmates did. Why? I didn't have any siblings. As an only child, I didn't have any siblings. So, you know, all the only time I had a chance to practice social skills was at school. 
And when you're at school, you're supposed to be doing what? You're supposed to be learning. And back then, it was very frowned upon to be sitting down there talking in class. So I used to get in trouble a lot talking in the classrooms and things like that. But I had to learn my way. But when I was coming up, we at least had recess and playground time. So I got a chance to sharpen at home my skills that way. But the main thing is I realized that I needed to be at school more to be around more kids. I mean, I had kids in the neighborhood, but trust me, my neighborhood was different than my school. The neighborhood was the hood. So um, being a, being good in school, I volunteered for after school projects. I was always around at school. Started off with the safety patrol in elementary, got into band in the fourth grade, and then the rest is, as you say, downhill. I mean, from the band, the band, you got band practice, you got concerts, you got all kind of things. And, you know, being the drum major of the band, I was, I've always liked to be out front in the mix, as it were. And I improved my social skills. But the funny thing is the guys I hung out at school with, my best friends, those were the, the geeks and the nerds, the guys who had awkward social skills. Hey, it's going to be all right. You'll be all right. It's too dark. You'll be all right. You'll be all right. Um, the geeks and the nerds, they had the least social skills. Okay? The geeks and the nerds had the least social skills. So what I did with those guys is I actually help them improve their social skills by when I was interacting with the cool kids and all those kind of things. Why is this important? Well, I've always been smart. I've always done well in school and academics, but that's hard skills. It's the soft skills that determine your success in life. And sadly today, too many people have horrible relationship skills today. Ladies, we're going to talk to you because uh, I, I've talked to, to the guys about this. Now, today is going to be your turn, ladies. Women, why women are alone. You need better relationship skills. In this moment, yes. I cannot say what's wrong or Money 
ni word Yo digo las cosas como son No sí. quiero ninguna, ninguna aceptación Tampoco vengo a pedir perdón Porque mis sentimientos se volvieron la canción yeah. No me vale mucho como tú me ves Sabes tú me llegas solo a los pies Para mí ser grande es un interés Ser un buen humano para mí es un deber El dinero ya lo veré No vendo mi alma, lo lograré Seré el más grande, no olvidaré de dónde ven money go my way Money work yeah. El mundo quiere dinero yeah. Yeah. Money work Se arregla con dinero yeah. Money work De corazón De corazón la plata no te hace ser feliz Ella es de corazón De corazón La plata no te hace ser feliz Money work El mundo quiere dinero Lisa, De, Del Sol, get back up on the camera. You know you want to go ahead and uh, sh she over here, uh, go ahead and get back up there. Cam up. What you got for me? Come on. You got it. You have, you have to turn it off. Let me go ahead and unmute you. Let me hear it. So what did I get wrong? Lisa gonna tell me what I'm what I'm so wrong about. I don't think you're wrong. I yeah, I am. Yeah, well, okay, hold on, <laughs> hold on. Go ahead. So um, I'm speaking on um, my mother. My mother was a single mom. Okay, um, your mother was a single mom. Yes. How I'm old is your mother? Mom. Um, my mother now she's older. She's fifty. Um, she's she fifty. Remarried. How old are you? I'm 24. Okay. Um, she remarried actually, uh, because her first husband had passed. Okay, but she... hold on, I need you to understand something. Mm -hmm. What did I say? Is your mama a baby mama? No, no, no. I'm not finished. No, no, no. She... I'm asking. Is, is your mama a baby mama? No. Initially, she's a widow. Oh, right. So, by definition, it's not the same. No, but I'm not done. Go ahead. So um, the next guy that she was with, after him, things did not work out. She did have a kid with that with that person. Uh -huh. And that's where all the other kids came in. And she was able to find someone else, even though she already had And your friends. point is ultimately what? My point is ultimately you can find someone else to be with you, even if you are. Right. Anymore. Now, why don't you go out and have a bunch of kids and see how that worked for you? I don't think that's going to work for me. Okay, well, why, just... so if you had so if you had daughters, you go out and recommend doing the same thing? Um, no, that's not the point. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, making... yes, it is. Oh, yes, it is. See, when you for ladies like you like to come in and say, yeah, but see, I know one person that it happened to work out for. And see, the exception doesn't disprove the rule. It proves the rule. First of all, your mother was married. She wasn't a baby mama to begin with. But then she turned around and chose to become a baby mama and then got married again. That's the way life worked out for her, yes. So why don't you go so, so what you wanna so what she's trying to tell you, ladies, is go out and have children. And it'll work out for you magically like her mom. Is that what you're telling them? No. Then, no. then what is it? I think the only reason to be a hundred percent honest with you, why it worked out for my mom, it's because my mom was like really, she was really beautiful. <laughs> so why are you, so again, is every woman really beautiful? But then you said, if you want to. No, ma'am. Is every woman really beautiful? First of all, I I'm going back and forth with you, but here's the net net of it. 
Do you know any women who have children who got married these days? Because see, your mother's 50. I'm from the same generation. You're 24? Mm-hmm. Right. You got any friends that have got kids? I have one friend right now that got married over Zoom, and she had a baby. Uh-huh. And, and she got married over... She got... Well, it's in the <laughs> COVID pandemic moment. All right. So, so again, explain. ladies, I'm going to tell you, if you want to listen to this, go right ahead. Set your sights and play the odds. But if you were out here giving women advice, what would you tell them? Bank on a COVID pandemic marriage? No, no, absolutely not. She was with him for a moment before. The what would you tell married. women to do? I would tell them don't make the same mistake twice. What do you mean? Don't make the same mistake twice. Would you tell them to get married before they had a baby? That's not, uh, of course. Okay. Then so Again, if you were telling, hold, are- if you were telling to get married before you had a baby, the whole thing about your mother, you just, you just uh, negated that. No, I think that's a different generation. So my mother was fortunate. No, I'm, I'm I 51 am- years old. It's not, it's a different, gen- it's not a different generation. The odds were bad back then too. See, you got all kind of, you got all kind of things going on because your mother was an attractive woman. She found she had more bites at the apple. So. Getting having a child outside of a marriage is dumb. Just because your mom lucked up does not make it the thing to do. Just because you can have a friend who can get married on over Zoom does not make it the thing to do. Why do you black women like to argue for the for the hard path? I'm not arguing for the hard path. Well, making the point, that. making the point, making the point for it is arguing for it. You're speaking. No, no. no understand something in debate when you are for something that's arguing for it. I'm saying don't do it. And you come in and say, well, no, I'm going to go the opposite. So you're in affirmation of this. No. Yes. That's what you did. No, 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 no. That's called what you're saying doesn't have any nuance. And I'm, I don't No, no, I'm going to nuance. See, the the wonderful thing about life is you ladies like to play all this nuance when it comes to me. And it's very black and white. Your mother was in in the extreme minority. Would you suggest that women go out and do what your mother did? No. Then that's all you need to be speaking about. Going out and telling women, well, I wouldn't suggest that you did it, but it can happen. Is that the wise course? You know what? You know what? You may not you may not OD on heroin or, or die, but it does happen. But go ahead and take your chances. That that's not what I'm saying. Yeah, it really kind of is. So at twenty four years old, why aren't you married yet? I'm. I have a boyfriend. Um, Why aren't you married yet? Did you go to college? Yes. Okay. What college did you go to? I do. I have to say my school out loud. Well, I don't care. Did you graduate? Um. Yes. Okay. Uh. By twenty, did you notice? Do you have any college friends that you went to school with? White friends, non-black friends that are getting married? Because when I was good, most women are getting married right out of college, between twenty-two and twenty-five. Mm, a lot of my, I don't want to be like, I don't want to sound racist or anti-Semitic or anything like that. But a lot of my Jewish friends were married during college. And exactly. Were, yeah. And so when I ask you, why aren't you married? You you look like I asked you something difficult. Why aren't you married yet? No, no, I don't think it's difficult. Um, don't want to get married this young? I'm, I, I, I love my boyfriend. Uh-huh. I'm happy being in a relationship. Right. You better say that shit because you're going to see the video, but you, but he, but why aren't you marrying him yet? Um, he wants to get married. Okay. So he's broke. No, he's not broke. So he's, so he's, so what's wrong with him? Nothing's wrong with him. So let me get this right. He's not broke and he wants to marry you, but you don't want to get married. What's wrong with you? Oh, I never said I don't want to get married. Well, I asked you, why aren't you married? We're just not married yet. How long have you been together? We've been together. We're going on two years. Why aren't you married? I'll take the six months. So let me get this right. He wants to get married. Yes. He's told you he wants to marry you. Yes. And you told him to go buy a ring. Yes. And he has it. Oh, I have a ring. Yeah. He's dropped on one knee and proposed to you. Yes. And you said what? Of course I said yes. You, but we hold, just on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Whoa, whoa. Uh, of course you said Yes. <laughs> Uh, that would make a fiance not a boyfriend. 
I mean. No, 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 no. I was very clear. He dropped on one knee, ring, proposed. You said yes. That makes a fiance, not a boyfriend. Yes. So why are you calling your fiance your boyfriend? Because it's very new. That's bullshit. Most women who that's are not ha- that's not no, that's no, not no that is bullshit. That is bull. That is bullshit. That is bullshit. When women get no, when women not. get engaged to a man they like and they got a ring, they can't wait. They brushing their hair all the time and look. Either show me your ring. Give me a hand. Show me the hand. Put your left hand up. Wait, no, no, no. Show me. No, no, just give me your left hand. It's in my dresser. You ain't engaged. Right no, see, see, guys, ladies, pay attention. This woman came on giving you advice. She has a boyfriend who she says is a fiance that she don't even claim. The ring ain't even on her finger. Ain't even on her finger. Yeah. Yep. See, here's here's what's called. She's what I she's what I consider to be pretty rich. She's what I consider to be pretty rich. Let me tell you what's wrong with pretty pretty rich women like this. Pretty rich women are some of the worst women to deal with. Why? If this was a man that she wanted to marry, first thing, she would have married him a long time ago. She damn sure wouldn't be calling a fiance a boyfriend. This is why I tell you, BBD, don't trust the big butt and the smile. You better not be trusting this pretty face just because she says something. See, Women like that tend to think men like myself get enamored with their looks. I'm not impressed. I see pretty women all the time. I don't let you just say some shit because you're pretty. So what? I get down to the meat of it. I question her just like I question everybody else. And you see the same BS. Another black woman who's apparently stringing some guy along because if he bought her a ring and it ain't on her finger, I asked her if she'd married. <coughs> I wish I could rewind it. Are you married? <coughs> oh, this chick ain't got no plans on marrying this dude. She wait until a better dude come by. Homeboy, if you're watching, rewatch this tape with your therapist and act accordingly. And if her mama was out there making moves like that, you better the apple don't fall far. Got me confused. Antonio, Antonio. Oh, yes, it's not true. Hold on, Antonio. Here's, here you go, Lisa. It's not true. Tell you what, Lisa. Let me go ahead and get you back on the camera. Since you want, I got, I got it for you tonight. Come on. Unmute. It's not true. Unmute. No. 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 It's not true. That's not true. Okay then. Okay. Back on the camera, please. Uh, go ahead and come up. I want to see this ring. I have it here. Uh huh. I want to see the ring. I want to see the ring. I want to see the ring. All right. Uh huh. Put it back on. Okay. Uh, put 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 the ring yeah, back on. I, I don't yeah. need to see. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We ain't trying to look at your boobs. We trying to see the ring. No, I just told you my dresser, sir. Okay. Uh huh. Now where's the man? He stepped out. He went to get me some food. Right. You guys live together. Yes. And how long you been engaged? It just happened. How long you been engaged? Literally like a week ago. Okay. Where do you propose? Right here at home. Uh, I said that he dropped to a knee in, in public and proposed. You said yes. I didn't hear in public. I just heard on a knee. Because we can't go anywhere. Nothing's open right now. Y'all been together two years. Have you started planning the wedding? Going on two years. I have to start planning it. But like, I'm a little worried because i um, calling up places and nothing's open. And you don't know when they're going to open. And... Who's paying for the wedding? Our parents. And us. Your mama's paying for it? No, 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 no. Um, his parents are putting something in, and my parents also putting something in, and he's also... What do you mean your parents? You mean your mama? Because you haven't spoke yeah. about your daddy. 
Um, my daddy passed away. Okay, I'm sorry to hear that. So his family's paying for it. Mm-hmm. Is he just how old is he? He's twenty six. Twenty six. Mm. Have y'all gone to counseling? Why? Premarital count because premarital counseling is usually recommended before you get married. Oh, I didn't know that was a thing. We don't have any issues. So. Uh no. Premarital counseling is a wise thing to do, especially for a woman okay. who's not claiming her fiance as, as her boyfriend. It was just a force of habit speech. Ah, okay. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Are you gonna have any kids? Um, um, of course, I would love to with him. I don't say. You say, of course. I'm. I don't know. He's a great man, and I think he'd be a wonderful father. Yeah, well, uh, here's the thing: if he's great, put the ring on, wear it, and start calling him fiance, not boyfriend. That's insulting. Of course. That's that's. Of I mean, course. I'm being. I mean, I'm being serious, but I'm being serious. It's not calling me your fiance is 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 insulting to him because as people in the public, yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, premarital counseling would be wise. Can I ask you a question? Uh, if it's going, uh, uh, go ahead. Because I, no, after, after you said your mama had all these husbands and kids and carrying on, go ahead though. No, I'm just asking you. Like, what did you mean by pretty rich? I've never heard that term before. In my oh, life. I do. I do. And uh, a broad, pretty rich basically means pretty women are used to having their mo- beauty acts like money for pretty women. Men, men with money have a certain amount of freedom in the world that men that are broke don't. Pretty women tend to get things, get people talk to them, treatment, get better treatment just based on their looks, unless you're around people who are used to pretty. It's like if you're around people who have money, your money doesn't impress them. Pretty rich. Um, I live in New York. I'm very regular. I'm not like pretty. I didn't. Not I don't. That, like- that, but that but the world ain't New York. So, uh, but yeah, out here I'm just like I'm I'm nobody. Yeah, uh, like, no, you somebody's fiance supposedly. Say it and act like it. All righty. Woo, boy, yeah, but get some counseling up in that mud. Hello. Hello. Aisha, Aisha, how do you pronounce your name? Aisha. Hi. I'm good. Why are women so angry today? Um, personally, I believe it is just unmet expectations set by the women before them, and they have those expectations have been capitalized on by um, people in the like relationship guru market. Matthew Hussey, Matthew Hussey to be one of them. Oh, 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 we don't, we don't, no, 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 we don't do that. Hold on. So don't we don't call our content creators. I don't do that over here. You can make okay. some point without without calling. Sorry. Well, let's just you know you know wouldn't go to a, a business and speak. But that's just poor form. So mm-hmm. what what, you, what you're saying is that the expectations who were set by their the previous generations and its relationship gurus who are capitalizing on this and the fashion industry, like mainly just general okay, industries. That how old are you? 24. Why do you ladies always seek to go to this huge global deep state conspiracy versus going to your own lived experience? Um, because general, it's a good place to start rather than... No, it's because you have no lived experience. I've a fair bit, but sure. Really? Okay, what's your longest... How, are you in a relationship? I am currently, yes. How long is it? How long have you been in it? Um, this one's quite short so far because it's just started. It's about one year, but my longest was five and a half years. At twenty four? Yes. I would. I wouldn't say it's necessarily a good one because obviously it ended. But well, 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 well <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What in what age did that start? I believe my junior year of high school. So like seventeen. So from 17 to 22, you're with somebody? Yes. Well, did you guys go to the same college? Yes. Why did uh, you He dropped out a few times. What's that? Okay. So, again, it would make more sense to talk about why those things fail than global conspiracies and fashion industries and everything else. 
Mm -hmm. that, that's that's what you lived. Mm -hmm. It's all theory. And you've been in a relationship for one year. Do you want to get married? Yes. How old is the guy you're saying? 27. Does he want to marry you? Yes. Has he proposed to you yet? Not quite because we are Not in the middle quite. of a bunch of changes. Yeah, we wanted to be about a year and a half to two years. Not, we oh, we no, 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 no. Listen to what I'm about to say. Mm -hmm. You ain't got shit to do with it. You just accept a decline. We ain't got nothing to do with it. Okay. You don't. Does he want to marry you? You said he does. I asked if he proposed. No, he said not. I said, why? Well, because we want to do something. He either proposes or he doesn't. Has he taken you ring shopping? No. No. Has he met your father? No. Yes. Has he asked your father for your hand for your hand in marriage? No. Has he met your mother? Yes. Have you met his mother and father? Yes. Who wants to hold up? Uh, just worth planning on moving, maybe a big cross country move. So we figured get the house, get the everything set up before. No, 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 trying no, to... no. What are we doing? You ain't doing shit. If you went to K Jewelers and got a, a $99 wedding special, would you accept it? Yes. Then what the fuck? And what are we talking about? <laughs> you see what I mean? Ladies, remember I said how you sabotage relationships? You try to run them. You try to manage men and you do too much. And I brought all this into focus, man, because you came on here trying to talk about and do too much versus focusing on your lived life. Okay. If a man wants to marry you, ma'am, he makes it happen. I agree, but I believe that there are external factors that need to be taken care of before you just make a huge financial commitment. Such a, I'll entertain this. Go ahead. Go ahead. Such a like as far as tying your lives together, I think you should probably be financially stable. You are getting kicked off of your parents' health care, and you Excuse basically me. have to take Excuse care me. of yourself. Excuse me. How how financially stable can you be at twenty four? You can't, which is why I'm not really trying to do it at twenty four. Exactly. Put your dick up. Can you elaborate on that? Put your dick up. In other words, trying to run stuff. You're young. You ain't got nothing. You're broke before or after you got married anyway. Insurance is not a reason to put off a marriage. If he's 27, you're 24, you take what you have and you move forward. See, what you young lady want, you sound like the man. Good. In what way do you see that? First off, the way you even talk right now. Trying to give you a No, 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 just the, just the tonality. The tonality in this conversation. And when I asked you very simply, ma'am, does he want to marry you? You said he does. Well, this is how right. you know a man wants to marry you. He proceeds with an engagement. If he's met your parents, you've met his parents, you say he wants to marry you, you said you'd accept the $99 K jewelry special, then that means he should be on one knee yesterday. And you move on with life. Because all the things you're trying to prepare for, you cannot get everything perfect before a marriage happens. A relationship happens. You're broke anyway. I mean, fair point. But personally, I was raised to try to say financial stability is what do you do something for a you should probably do. What do you do for a living? Uh, currently, I am just working retail. But if you don't shut the. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> what? Exactly. I said this yesterday fear of commitment. Prototypical right here. 
You ain't financially stable working retail. What does he do? He is in law. No, no. What does he do? Being in law means he could be a criminal or a Supreme Court judge. What does he do? Law innovations. Excuse me? Law innovations. Law innovations. Talk to the audience like we're four years old. Is he an attorney? No. Law is innovations. Par- what does that mean? That That's what I... Okay. Law innovations basically means what he does is he takes the practice of law and basically... If a, basically, if a company wants to um, hire your law firm, it is his job to basically take all the paperwork that you fill out and make requests for, automate it, translate it, find like some sort of system, push it out. That's one of his main things that he does. Another thing that he does is he'll do all the serving of papers and like extra stuff. That's my baseline understanding of it. I don't do law. <laughs> right. Is he on his own business? No. Who does he work for? Perkins. Who? Hmm? Coy. Perkins and Coy. It's a multinational law firm, one of the okay. biggest in the United States. And what does he make annually? 80K. In what state? Oregon. Sounds like plenty enough money to get married on. Because I yeah. guarantee he's making more than you, which you're reaching. Oh, land. yes, yes. So I what are you talking about? So what are you talking about? That I need to be at a relatively comparable or slightly lower level than him. Yeah. Why? Because that's what we both decided was relatively fair. <laughs> uh-uh, this man don't want to marry you. That's why you're making up all these reasons. You're damn sure, because you're gonna be cause apparently you're gonna be got a fifty fifty marriage. You're gonna be working, right? Yes, I have. Right, right, right. You're planning yeah. on having children. Potentially, yes. Right. Woo wee. <laughs> Please avoid. No, 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 no. Don't get married. Please don't get married. There's a divorce waiting to happen. And what See, makes you say that? Oh, well, well, because because I've lived a hell of a lot longer than you, and I've been able to diagnose what's going on with you in the first two minutes. You should shut okay. up and let you should be you should be quiet and listen, because you think you're smarter than you are, and you're really not. To twenty four years old, and you barely just learned how to piss straight, and you came in here talking about. Uh, other content creators of global fashion industries when you are a fucking retail rep with no money talking like you know something I did stop that sit your young ass down you don't know nothing and that's the problem with so many of you young college educated women you think you got it all figured out and you're out here trying to make moves and decisions where you're not qualified for and that's fine but at least know what you don't know. Get off my phone. Why not do that? I need to be on at least the same financial level as him before he gets paid. He's in law innovations and you on drive you on fries at a drive through. All right, well. So where's that? You know what? Maybe somebody Put the timestamps down there. Young lady, you need to get, you guys need to get premarital counseling. Premarital counseling, uh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Oh, it was on a previous call. Thank you to the people who put the timestamps in the video. Young lady, um, really, 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 there's a lot going on with you. I, I, so many, uh, so many sisters just are just too, you're too damn hard. You're just too damn hard. Hello. 
And I, I want to say something. Uh, first off, you need to introduce yourself. Yeah, uh, I need to yell, Bobby. Why'd you turn the light out? I, I'm in the dark. Why? Speak out uh, Why? 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 And I'm, you're going to go over and talk, baby. And you're not listening, lady. This is this is a talk show. Either you're going to do it the way I ask you to do it, or I'm going to bid you a good night. You have light capabilities? Thank you. Please be reasonable. What would you like to say? I want to say there's a lot of gender biases within the black female community. On one instance, I have noticed that even though I'm in shape as a black woman, I have a job. I am very passionate towards a black man. I do want to point out that even though I've done a lot of these things, there are biases that I see within black men where if you don't fit or portray a certain phenotype, or a certain hold on, hold on. Let me let me let me, let me let me let me stop. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Tell me about your relationships because what you're saying is very vague in general. And 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 due respect, ma'am, I hear a lot from women, black women in particular, about what's global. What about what happens in your relationships? Agree. I talked to about three black men, total about three within just a two week period. All right. And uh, one's a security guard, okay. works at my job. Right. The other one works in a gym, okay. And the other one um, is a younger guy, works a night shift, okay, at the same gym. Okay. And I noticed that um, at first they're friendly when you try to meet them. At first they're like, they're kind to you and everything. I tried to be, you know, patient, understanding everything, you know, try to be open. And then I notice, like, you know, I'm exercising, you know, I, I'm very passive, very feminine, very working out. All of a sudden, they decide just, like, they don't want to talk to me anymore. I didn't say anything wrong. It was just, I don't know, like, let me, did let me I stop. Do? Hold on, Jill. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. What you cannot know is why they did what they did. Let's stop right here. You said... Everything was going okay, and then all of a sudden, they didn't want to talk to you anymore, right? Right. Hold Just on. for no reason. No, no, no. no. Okay. There's always a reason, ma'am. Human beings do stuff for reasons. One, two, all three of them just didn't want to start, just stop talking to you, right? No, it's just like they stopped showing up for their shifts. Like one guy, like... Okay, but, but okay, like when you say stop, okay, okay. When you say stop talking to you, that's what I'm sticking to, not shifts. Yeah. Is, Were you yeah. dating these guys? No, I'm just having like a friendly conversation, you know. All right, and then and life. then the friendly conversation stopped with all of right. them. Uh, why just do you Why do you think? Okay, but well, here's the thing. Why do you think that is? I have no idea. Make a reason. Well, what is it? F first of all, you said you did nothing wrong, and it's all on them. I'm going to tell you right now, talking to you has been somewhat difficult just to get you to get in flow with this, this program. Communication is a two-way street. Okay. And if one, two, three men stop communication with you, the only common thing with all of those is you. You put yourself in a position as a victim that's why I stopped you with all this global bias stuff. How old are you? I'm 25. 25. And the men you say that you were talking to were either at at security guard or at the gym or something like that, right? Correct. What about men you meet outside of... Not not at your gym, just out and out and about. I mean, pretty much, uh, I spend a lot of my time at work, and I spend trying spend a lot of my time trying to focus on my health, like wherever my hobbies is. Then be towards okay. Where do you work? You know, I don't need to know specifically. Uh, what do you do? Uh, I work for FedEx as a. Oh, um, all right, all right. So you work with FedEx. Ahead. Yes. Twenty five years old. 
Yes. Uh, but if you're going to interact with people, you got to get out of the house. And you just tell me that what I'm hearing from you is a woman who needs improved communication skills with men in general. And that's why I stopped you because it's easy for you ladies to start blaming everything else other than a person in the mirror. I asked you, what about what happens when you go out to meet guys in general? And you say, I don't. Well, that needs to be improved. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to work on that. It's, you know, I don't know if, like, they have preferences or what. Like, because, you know, as a woman, if you go up and meet a guy, you don't know what the heck they're going to think of you. You know, if there's no sexual chemistry or whatever. Yeah, that's the first thing you're judging, so... You're trying to do everything you can to try to mold into what they think is fitting, like what you said earlier. They want girls that are softer back in the day. And then to the early 2000s, the early 90s, I was raised to be harder because the men were mistreating women who were housewives. That's bullshit. They were not mistreating But women. see, that's the reality, sir. You got to allow people who actually walk the put there. Excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me, ma'am. No. The facts are the facts. That is more that is more of that psycho babble bullshit. Black women are not being abused like that. And this is more of these black men are in jail, down low, or or uh unemployed stuff that's just not true. See, and you're twenty five. And I was raised with women who were mistreated as housewives. Well then but the thing is, ma'am, that ain't you. Okay. You were born in nineteen what ninety five, correct. So, do respect. Don't tell me about something that I lived through that you didn't. Well, it sounds to me like you were raised by around a bunch of hard women. True, because you True. sound like a hard woman. Well, I mean, well, and, well, I, and here's the know. thing. Listen to what I'm about to say because this is going to be important. Pay attention, breathe, because it's not personal. Okay. The world does not owe you, me, or anybody understanding. Your problems, my problems, are my own. If you were raised around a bunch of hard women, just last night's show, I had a woman calling on talk about, I'm engaged now, and I had to get out from around my negative, hard female family members because they were poisoning me. And you sound like you have a mind full of poison at 25. But when I ask you about your own personal experiences with men, they aren't there. You don't have any. You haven't told me about I went out on a date. You said I've talked to guys at the gym or this or that. And then they stopped talking to me. Well, there's a reason. But all of a sudden the guys are bad. Therapy, ma'am, because you cannot, yeah. you cannot change who raised you. But if you walk around thinking that <clears throat> people respond to relationships are reflective and people respond to what we put out and you have a deeper voice and a harder way of being. I mean, case in point, when you came onto the show, you didn't even say, hey, how you doing, Kevin? You didn't even greet me. You just said, hey, I got some shit I want to say. <laughs> I mean, I, th I thought you was going to give me a hot 16. I mean, shit, I'm like, God damn. I mean, I'm expecting a woman to come in and is like, well, what's up, nigga? I just got some shit I need to get off my chest up with this bitch. Arf, arf. You're right. Well, well that's right. what comes across. And that's not what men want, man. Right. So I, I'm not going to take away from traumas or things that may happen to other people. But it's your okay. life. Yes, sir. You're 25. You don't need to be living uh, the women in your past, in your lives, uh, issues with men. Uh, all right. Okay. Appreciate it, sis. Yes, take care. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, ladies. See, a lot of women today are angry because you've been told to be angry. Let's go there. A lot of your mothers have told you men ain't shit. A lot of a lot of your mothers have told you, men ain't shit, beware. And then you coming out here and you're like, well, damn. 
I don't want to be like, like the colleague said, I don't want to be like my mother or my aunts or my cousin. I don't want to live my life by myself. But you were told men are bad and men to be feared. And you're going to have to do the right work. You're going to have to, you're going to have to actually learn who we are and what we want, because we're not going to change. We're not going to change. And we're not going to pick you just because you have a, uh, uh, a nice body. Not for long. We'll have fun with you. We're not going to, we damn sure ain't going to keep you. And that's what another thing that gets you women so upset because you may be attractive, you may be fit or whatever. And you get a man like the woman with the communication degree, that woman who obviously had issues. I don't doubt that she probably can attract men, but the ability to keep a man, she does not possess it. That's why, you know, I mean, let me give you some, let me give you some things that run men away. I'm going to use the communications chick. <laughs> All that little stupid ass laughing that you were doing, man. Slap yourself. You sound like a straight damn fool. We be listening to the broadcast and I let women listen to it. They were like, what is her problem? You sounded like a fool. <coughs> well, uh, <coughs> um, and I'll let um, uh, that lip smacking. So over the top. But what she was doing that for is to purposely sabotage interactions with men. So she doesn't have to get close to anybody. Women like her blow stuff up. She all she is is an object. When I let her talk, what happened? She just told her this and do. I'll I'll replay the conversation. It was just a stream of con. I'm just like, wow. And the sad part is, 50, 60 years ago, that's a woman that could have been saved. And she walked around talking about, I choose to be this way. I'm a PhD. I don't need a man. I'm a PhD. Like, well, damn. You you think you're the shit, huh? Yes. I've I've got a degree in communications. And and that resonated with me. Resonated or resonated? You know, resonated. I'm clowning you. Because it was sad, man. It really was. But let's do it. Intermission. Let's get this money up. Get these likes up. About to open the call line. Let's see what we got going on. Oh man, we don't even have the likes up over a thousand. Oh man, we got to get the likes way up. Oh, let me help this chick out. Bye. Money work. Yo digo las cosas como son. No quiero ninguna, ninguna aceptación. Tampoco vengo a pedir perdón. Porque mis sentimientos se volvieron la canción. No me vale mucho como tú me ves. Moderators. Time out any of these crazy people talking about the best from anything else. None of that time. No time for that. Come on. Again. It's only a problem. It's only a problem if you're outspoken. Money work. 
the corazon. He shouldn't be saying these kind of things. We've got right to reason to be angry and, un and unhappy. It ain't our fault. Cool, ain't nobody said it was. Nobody gonna put up with it though. Especially not me and who had to work to get to the next level. Luna. And then the thing with uh George Floyd happened. Yes. Which shook everybody to our core. You know, when you hear a man you know screaming for his mama, mm -hmm. I think everybody in the world felt that. So, you know, uh everything sh switched reels for me. And I uh I just been on this quest trying to trying to get us true equality, you know, not just equality on you know social issues but economic equality which is you know just as important well let's just jump right in then q um because i have been you know looking at some of the um bites from your interview you did first mistake with all this stuff with this wig on your head you don't look at bites from an interview you read the plan you read the plan. Well, I'm sorry. You know, this is a black man who wrote the plan. I mean, this is only the black man. The reason you sit in your butt right here is because this black man who is a rapper, record producer, actor, screenwriter, film producer, television producer, songwriter, film score composer, film director, voice actor, $160 million net worth. The reason your hot pants is sitting right here is because he put you in a movie and you didn't even take the time to read the mother freaking plan former prime minister of Turks and Caicos wife still talking about how you still feel so connected to these people in your diplomatic position and you could not be bothered to read a plan. That was too much. So you just watched a clip of an interview with Roland Martin. You already seen that it really doesn't matter how high or how much a black man does for some black women. You still going to be treated like a knockoff deadbeat cousin. Interview with Roland Martin, which mm -hmm. helped me, I want to say, because I will say that when I first heard that you were supporting Trump, I was like, wait a minute, what? Hold on, because you my boy. So I was like, I got a personal I, inside. I'm like, hold on him directly. I didn't say I was supporting Trump. So no, I'm yeah, that right. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's what I heard. That's what the bite, mm. the sound bite. Yeah. You know, that's why people gotta do their research. And I watched that interview and I heard you break it down to Fair use. why you were involved, why you met with both sides. And when you got involved, which was not just recently. And so yeah. when I said, you know, uh, um, what contract was he talking about? This contract of Black America? Like, what is that? Where did it come from? I did not know. So when I said, when I think of things that I don't know, I automatically assume that a whole lot of people out there don't know. So I would want you to educate me as well. So what did make you go to the administration and, and speak with them? Well, what happened was, you know, it was a lot of yelling, a lot of people upset, a lot of uh, reforms being put on the table during George Floyd. But I was looking around for a document that really was speaking on what's, what's the needs in the community and what, what do we need across the board, not just from government, but from the private sector too. Because um, there's a lot of companies that are involved in our pain and, and they got to pay up too. You know, it's, they owe us reparations as well in some uh shape or form so uh it was nothing i was looking around i'm like damn where is the document where is the acts what are we asking for as a people across the board that deals with not only police brutality but all our needs um so i started working on, on it myself with you know some smart people i know we end up getting um you know, economists involved, uh, people like Derek Hamilton, 
um, you know, we started to go and just find the smartest minds to help try to put a document together so we can actually have something to say, damn, all this is things we need. This is so anybody black could look at our document and say, yeah, support this, support, you know, some of the things that we have. Now, I'm not a politician and I, I shouldn't be the one to have to put this thing together. We've had politicians in place for a long time and they haven't come up with something like this. So just so we're clear, they ask him, she asks, well, you know, when I first started hearing about this contract with America, I didn't know what it is. So why don't you explain it to him? Mr. Rapper, record producer, actor, screenwriter, film producer, television producer, songwriter, film composer, film director, voice actor. Explain this contract with America that you, an unelected politician, who looked around for what the politicians in black America had put together, and it's not there. So just like the alpha male you are, the man you are, what did he do? He went ahead and did, instead of asking people, he did it. You know, you want black men to build something, right? You want black men to build something and stop asking. So he found a need and he did it. So he added one more thing onto the 50, 11 million plates he's already spinning. And then he's over here talking to you. Y'all can't be bothered to read it. So he need to explain it to you. This is what I'm setting this up for. This ain't this, like you said, this ain't what he does. But because it needed to be done, he did it. That's what men do. So I was surprised, but that didn't stop me. And we put that together July 1st and we revamped it about, uh, let me get the timeline here. We revamped it July 19th. And from then people wanted to interview me about it. So I went on just promoting the contract with black America, you know, hoping to be contacted by any of the politicians saying, yo, this is a great idea. Everybody that I would show would say, oh, these are great ideas. This is common sense. This is things that should be in place already, but they're not. So I was just kind of saying, okay, we're going to Yeah, starting an initiative, and I'll make a long story short. I was just going up, basically saying, one, two, three, three terrible wigs. I said, ladies, these wigs, these lace fronts are from hell. From hell. Y'all got on TV looking like this. All right, we're going to need y'all to go ahead and keep the donations coming in because it's about to get off the chain. You know, Lisa Ray was the only one that came out and tried to be at least start off respectful. Start off respectful. But I need you to look at their faces. Not a smile in the group. Is this what's wrong with black relationships? Because that's supposed to be friends, right? They all know each other, right? This man is a uh, is a is an entertainer and an actor, not a politician, but he put something together for black folk, right? Your friend, who's a successful black man, put something together for black people, right? And y'all can't even be bothered to smile. He came to your house, right? And you can't even greet him with a you know anyway. Okay, we're gonna go after the private sector. We're gonna go after the banks. We're gonna go after Hollywood. We're gonna go after the people that we know got their hands in the cookie jar. You know what I mean? So then we started to get contacted from, we got contacted from the Democrats on um, September 8th. And then we started talking to them. Mm -hmm. Then we got contacted by the Republicans. So that's when the ball started rolling then. So it's not just like I just jumped into anything. I mean, I just did the contract. And then people started to contact me, not the other way around. I was hoping the Democrats would be all over me. Um, but, you know, that wasn't the case. And and I understand it wasn't like I was throwing a fit. I just was like, OK, we're going at the private sector. And then the Republicans contacted me. And to me, if you speak it for black people, you should speak to whoever is in power or about to be in power. And I think you had a statistic and you said something about there has been 7,000 black people elected 
and you felt like in, in offices for us and you felt like they ain't made a change. They have, we've not come far at all with 7,000 of us in there. What are we going to do? Who is going to take this and say, okay, I'll be in the front line of this and then get in the front line and have everybody on, come on board with you? Because let's be honest, you are Ice Cube and you do have a, a huge platform. So I, I, I would say that um, for me to know that you've been using your platform to be able to have an initiative like that, I think it's worth you doing the interviews that you're doing and letting everybody know and hear your voice on why. I want to jump in and say, I just don't think it's that fair to, to the 7,000 of black elected officials that have been in office. Right. Not cool. To say that they've done nothing. Right? Yeah. You hear that? They couldn't wait to find something to disagree on. I saw the sign. S I G N. Shame, insults, guilt, the need to be right. Sign. The foundation of so many black women's pathology. They were waiting for something to jump at this brother on. Wait a minute. Hold on. I just need to say that I don't think it's fair to say that. How about you ask a question first? Because none of y'all asked a damn question. But you want to jump in and say what ain't right. Look at your rock faces. Yeah, because I, I think that is, I, I, I think that's a slippery slope to, to walk down because as we saw with Barack a lot Obama, of progress has been made. It's not as simple as. A lot of progress has been made. Shut up, Vivica Fox. I'm about tired of seeing your twisted up mouth everywhere. Every time you come on camera, your face is twisted up. We get it. You're a smart, sassy, strong black woman. Do you have another gear? Do you have another character? You've been playing the same character for the last 30 years. We get it. Damn. As you get elected and bam, you can make all these changes. One man. One I, I, I never said that 7,000 people, black people have never did anything. I said that since the sixties, there's been over 7,000 black uh, politicians elected in prominent positions and our situation, you know, as far as the wealth gap hasn't changed. We flatlined from the '60s to now. We've had we have not gained or closed the wealth gap. So that's the major problem. I understand we got a lot of people, you know, working hard for progress. That the just the facts are, it hasn't happened. Facts. Remember, so many women like these women here have a pro problem with truth. Facts. Because it's all about feelings. Feelings, feelings, feelings. I need you ladies to, who disagree with me. Ask yourself a question. Do you get the feeling or the vibe that these women came into this conversation with this black man in good faith? Does anyone in here honestly look at the panel of women talking to this black man that they know and admire, respect, seen his track record, been married to the same black woman since 1992? Does anybody feel the vibe that they came into this particular conversation, interview on their platform, professional platform, in good faith? The numbers speak for themselves. Because at the end of the day, women are coming into places to where men are. And that's the ultimate issue. With a lot of these people who have problems with things that, like I say or some of the other guys are saying, it doesn't matter how I say it. The fact is, there's some women that just are, are just have a, are angry. I don't want to say uh, uh, they just have a problem with black men. You can never be right. Nothing you can ever do is good. And the problem is that you have starting to have women, younger women, women period, coming over into here because here's the thing: whether you are this or that, or level up or date out. The end, the end consumer of the product that is a woman is a man. And if you got all this theory and mindset for women and there are no men 
picking them up, getting them, coupling and moving on means nothing. So let's get into it. You said, where are the high value women at? Behind that preposition. Behind that preposition. The high value women would see that statement and be like, ah. <laughs> see, what I listened to what 50 said. I listened to what Curtis Jackson said, and it wasn't insulting. He was stating his preference. And the thing is, why not just say, if this is what men like him want, and if I want a man like him, you're going to have to give him what he wants. I have yet to hear women in mass, when, when you hear a lot of sisters, especially older sisters, say black men say we're angry with this, with that, we're hard to cooperate with, we're not submissive. All right, then if you hear this, why don't you become that? You hear what, it's not as though you don't hear what these guys are saying they want. Let's just be real. You don't feel as though you have to give it to them. Because far too many of our, far too many women in our culture feel as though they're above the men. This is a culture thing. More than a race thing, it's a culture thing. You don't have to respect you can say I'll respect my man and I'll submit to my man. Yeah, but you'll give every other group, every other man in the culture your butt to kiss. And that's not how this thing works. And sadly, while you have between 16 and uh 16 and 29, men have between 18 and 90. What are you going to do? Because it's not as though he said something wrong or was being overly rude. But if he decides he wants to go down the path and do something different, he has the option. So. That's most. Hey, man, you can't you can't type in all caps, man. You can't type in all caps. It'll time you out. Hey, man, if you come in here typing in all caps, Wallace. Type like you have some sense, man. You're going to have to go. Uh, you love Derek Jackson? Okay, cool. Enjoy. Look, man, I don't have problems with people. I, look, I don't have a problem with... If you like somebody's content, I think it's... I think some of the things he says is dangerous to women, especially when older women. They aren't getting on tonight. They're like, oh, I don't want that part. So, um, what else was I going to say? I was listening to, um, I'm not going to say the woman, but there's, I want to get back to this other part. Older women. And when I talk about older women, we're talking about from a marriage standpoint. That means women over 30. 30 years old is old to be contemplating a first marriage. Go to matchmakers, wedding planners. Anybody will tell you that's just what it is. It's old to be planning a wedding. Okay. Like I said, we got to start calling things what they are. And again, what do I heard a woman talking about the wall that men hit the wall too. And how, you know, if you're a, a black woman, the wall isn't the wall for you. This notion that, you can make up rules to suit you just because you, again, notice how when women like this begin to speak, they want to change things because they've aged past. See, when you still have time, you don't care. Somebody, if you're 22, somebody says the wall, you're not really sweating it. But when you're 29 and somebody says the wall, then you got a problem with the concept of the wall. Why? Because you wasted those years. The wall exists for a reason. The wall exists for a reason. Derek Jackson graduated high school in 2007. Yeah, that's another thing. I I, I gotta say, I, I'm looking at you women with a side eye who 
who really listen to what he says. He just turned 30. And especially older women listening to him, you know, you should know better. The women that can listen to him, really, if they were in their teens to early 20s, sure. There's no way a guy who just turned 30 could tell you anything. Not for the most, not, not for the entirety of women. Let me say that. The wall. I mean, I heard this woman, you know, you're just wrong about the wall and a man and a man can hit the wall too. Uh, if a man's money is not right, he's at the wall. Yeah, but see, he can always get, go get more money. You can't go get more time. You can't. A man can, a man can, a man can get himself together and inside of a year or inside of three years, turn his entire life around. You can't do that. Again, age gap dating, the group of women that have them, the women that have a problem with it because they can't do it. Older women dating younger men know that there is no future in this. It is a it is just a short time, but again, the wasting the most valuable time. If you're dating, if a woman's dating a man ten years younger than him, when he decides he's done with that, she's just wasted her time. And what you're going to notice is it comes down to time, patriarchy, gender roles, traditional values, all comes down to time. So go ahead. And if, if I got something wrong on this high value thing, go ahead, join in. But see, the thing is, Hydell, if you type in the caps, man, it's going to block you. If you type in caps, it's going to block you. And I said it the day of the day. Who can tell you sisters the truth? Who can tell you the truth? All right, this is your second. Uh, you need, hello? All right, this is your second time gone. Hello? Hello? Yes, Tamika. Hi, Kevin, how are you? Hey, how are you? How many times have you called into my show? Uh, I think this might be my third time. The first time okay. you weren't hearing me so well. The second time we had a discussion. This is my third time. We've had we've had two discussions. So wh what can I help you with? <laughs> I have a question. Um, uh, you you make a statement hold sometimes. On, hold on, Allison. I will get back. I'm gonna put you back in the um, waiting room, Allison. You'll be up next. Okay. Sure, no problem. No, no, no. You, you, know, you can stay. You can stay to me. Go ahead, Tamika. Go ahead. I make a. I make a statement. That go ahead. Ask your question. Um. So I've heard you say oh, quite a few times that um, unmarried women will generally die alone. Um. But based on my observation, if What's a the woman question? is younger, What's the question? If I... What's the question? I don't need a statement. Just give me the question. Wouldn't a married woman who is much younger than her husband die alone as well? But she got a chance to be married and have a life and have kids. It's not a trick question. One out of three black women marry. That means three out of four will die unmarried, i.e. die alone. It's 75% most. It's 75 okay, I was just saying. It's 75% 75, 75% most. Sure, yes. Okay, so if most black women don't marry in their lifetime, won't most black women die alone? I agree. I'm, I'm not disputing that part. Okay. I'm just saying if a female is much younger than her husband, um, it is likely for him to pass well, away it's not before the same. her, and she will okay, die okay. alone so, regardless. Okay, okay. Okay, you're, you're, you're trying to play tit for tat. It doesn't matter. 
She got <laughs> married. The other ones didn't. Focus on the one. Okay, you're not married. No. And this not is married. and and I would say this topic likely bothers you. No, it doesn't. What, oh, then why are you okay? Then what is your ultimate point? That hey, all everybody dies alone. Well, if you want to get if you want to get technical, Tamika, everybody dies alone. No one dies with somebody else. That's not the point. See, let me explain something to you. Many black women are like you. You always have to be right. You're going to still argue when you're wrong on the facts. If you looked in the chat room, everybody's look, saying, what the fuck is wrong with this woman? Most black women die alone. And you're still talking about, well, a woman who gets married to an older man and he dies, she still dies alone as well. <laughs> For the most part, I agree with all the things that you say. Th this just particular part, it's almost. Get off my show. I don't give a shit if you agree with most of the things. It's ridiculous. I'm not going to sit there and argue with your ass about the fact that most women are going to die alone. They don't get married. Wasting my time. Again, you see? It doesn't matter if you're right on the facts. Even if they agree with you, you're right. One out of four will get married. That means three out of four won't. So the three out of four that don't get married will die alone. Instead of just saying, yeah. Yeah, but isn't that just as bad as if one if one of the ones that got married? See, what they're trying, it's almost like I heard this argument where somebody tried to make being a baby daddy and being an in-home father the same thing. We try to make dysfunction normal so we don't have to feel somewhere about it. If that is not a dysfunctional ass culture, I don't know what it is. And you called me three times. I remember your calls. Hello? Hello. What's your disagreement? Um, I would say maybe I would say a disagreement and a question um, at the same time. Um, let's, start really with, start... let, let's start with the okay. disagreement. Okay, um, so basically I saw one of your videos about how long should a high-value woman wait to um, uh, give it up to a high-value man. And I, you said that it should be three days. So I do disagree with that. So then... Hold on, hold, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So let's clear up okay. something. How old are you? Me, I'm 37. 37. How tall are you? I'm 5'2". Dress well, size. 5'1 and 3 quarters. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, three, that, that quarter of an inch matters. Uh, what's your dress size? <laughs> I'm a size 6. Size 6. How much did you weigh the last time you weighed yourself? I weighed about 135, 142. In between there, I ranged. Last time I went to the doctor's said 135 so five foot two address size six 135 all right i'll trust you on that um and you're 37 have you ever been mm -hmm. married no been single my whole life <laughs> all right any children no no children when was the last time you had a relationship um, I would say it's been a while. I think um, it's been probably since 2013. It's been a while. Seven years. And what about mm -hmm. the last, what about, what about the relationship before that one? Um, before that one, oh, eight. Yeah. So, so since 2008, you've had two relationships. Let's just agree. Let's just accept that. Would you consult? Would well, you class? Right. Excuse me. One. Since oh yeah, so one in oh eight, and then that relationship ended, and then um, I had a boyfriend in twelve. So that was it. So two. Mm hmm. All right. Would you classify yourself as a high value woman? Um, I'm not probably not clear on what you mean by that. I'm asking you. I'm not quite certain what the definition of high value woman would be. <laughs> well, you, well, you said that the issue you have is that I said that a high value woman 
should not make a high value man wait for sex longer than three dates. Mm-hmm. What's so the, I guess oh, that oh, in my okay. mental so, definition of a high value woman, then I would I would not classify myself as a high value woman. Okay, so why did I say not don't make him wait more than three days? Well, the reason that you said it was because you said that the high value man was um investing into the dates. Um, for pretty much, I guess, all three dates is what the high value woman would be expecting the high value man to do. But I mean, I wouldn't even put that on just high value women. I, uh, I all right, man. Uh, all right, okay, one. okay. All right, all right. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You got that all wrong. Okay. You're 37. Mm-hmm. That was a three hour video, and I repeated why my justification was over a dozen times. Right. It ain't what you just said. So let me remind you, as a woman, you should not be accepting a date from a man that you are not sexually attracted to, period. That's one date. Don't go out with a man you're not sexually attracted to. Would you agree or disagree? I agree. All right. So if you're already sexually attracted to the man, and in today's modern era, you can ask any question, get anything lined up up front. You can get any questions you need answered before the first date and during, or before the first date or on the first date. The first date is basically to see whether or not there's some chemistry there after the attraction is there. After date one, you should not go to date two unless you want to sleep with him. Would you agree or disagree? I would... I would agree. All right, so you... First date, you you find them attractive enough to sleep with. Sec- That's before the first date. After the first date, you see that there's some chemistry and you want to sleep with them. Then why is it a problem acting on that after the third date as grown people? Well, the reason why I disagreed with it is because I don't think that um, the fact of maybe, you know, that particular woman has. Ma- ma- you know, ma- 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 I asked you what before you tell me why you disagree. Can you answer my question? Okay. You want he's the you, you don't go out with a man you do that you don't find attractive enough to have sex with. And then don't do damn sure don't accept the second date if you would not have sex with him or want to have sex with him. So after the third date. Why not just act on that? If if you already are attracted to him, and you know you want to have sex with him. Why not? And you're saying don't act on it because of her values. Yeah. What values are we talking? What values are we talking about? Like um, her self pride, her, her her dignity. That's not. No, no. Those aren't values. Me. Those aren't. No, no. Those aren't values. Values are like Christianity, religion, values. And I'm assuming I'm dealing with grown people and we aren't virgins. I mean, okay. But then uh, what if, I mean, she just maybe wants to just, you know, you know, like uh, keep her body count down. You know, she doesn't want to seem like she's such. So well, okay. Okay. All right, all right. Okay. Okay. Then don't go on the dates. See, that's how it used to work. Hold on, ma'am. See, that's how it used to work. See, women used to understand you don't accept anything from a man because the man's going to want something in return. But women like you think you should just be able to go out with a man. He spends his money and he's investing all this other kind of stuff. And you're playing games. You're 37 years old. And even with your lack of relationship experience, you know damn well. 
This is true. If you want to keep your body count low, get married. But don't go out with men that you don't want to do anything with. If you don't want to do, don't accept. He asks you out. No, thank you. Let's go out to dinner. No, thank you. What's so hard with saying no? What's so hard with saying, nope, I'm not. I don't want to have sex with you. We're in that third date area. No, thank you. After the first date, you know what's coming. So here's a better question. Let's rewind. How long, how many dates do you think it should take or how many months before you have sex with a man? How long should a man, how, how long should you make a special guy wait? A special guy that is definitely investing in your time and so his interest. I, I, asked um, that. I think yeah. that, yeah, I think that um, I personally would wait around three, three to four months before. Right. Which is why you, me. which is why you have nobody. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> That's why you have nobody. That's why you have nobody and you have had really no relationship experience. So you need to listen to what I'm saying because you're not winning. You're losing. Let's just put the rubber on the road. 2008 was 12 years ago. You're losing. What are you saving yourself for? What are you talking about? Why don't you just go ahead and admit it? I'm afraid. There's fear motivating this. No, I'm not afraid of anything. Yeah, you are. You're afraid. You're afraid of it not working. Tell me I'm wrong. Well, maybe in some ways. Exactly. Some ways, that's uh, and I said, and that's to... it. You were afraid of it not working, and you know why? Because you know you're not cut out for a relationship. So when he finds out that something's wrong with you, you're emotionally awkward, you're not really fit for a relationship, he'll leave you. Then you'll feel like you got used. Well, then fix the thing that's wrong with you. But don't be sitting around thinking you're going to make a grown damn man wait 90 days and take you out week after 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 week. Because guess what? Well, so guess what, Deanne? Deanne, guess what? Deanne, guess what? After 12 dates, he could still leave. Are you going to have... What difference is it going to make? He's going to leave after 1 or 12. Yeah, that's true. So... What you just said is what you what you've just proven is what you say makes no sense. You're talking out of fear. So you can disagree, but you're not disagreeing with me. Your issue is you can't keep a man. Yep. Okay. Well, because everything that I said, ma'am, you said you agree with. Don't go out with a man that you don't find at least attractive enough that you would have sex with him. That's just the baseline for date one. After date one, you should not go out with the man that you would not have sex with. That means it's either an up or down vote. Because men don't want to be played, ma'am. We don't want to be. You, you seem like you don't want to run your body count up, but you got no problem running his credit cards up and wasting his time. How about this? No, if you want to, would... how, about, how about this then? How about this, Deanne? Let's do it your way. You go out for three months before you have sex. All right, here's how we do that. You pay for every date until after we have sex. Then, then he starts paying. I'll pay and for we... half the date. No, 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 no. See, 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 thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you see what I'm saying? Money tells the truth. Money tells the truth. She's willing to go Dutch, but she's not willing to invest in a man that she even says is special. This is why you are losing. Well, he's not investing all his money. Well, see, I but the th- cause then I would feel like I would be using them and I'm not. a. Uh, uh, I'm excuse not a me. Like excuse, that, excuse me. Say that again. You wouldn't want to do what? I would. I wouldn't want him to pay for all of the dates because then I would feel guilty. Like I right, would. Right. Right. But that's how it goes. Men typically pay. 
See, you just show exactly the logic I laid out. And you ladies want all the benefit, none of the risk. You want guarantees and relationships are risks. Understand something. They're risks. And you want the man to take his time and his money to try to get you over some mark 12 dates into it that you already agreed was surpassed on date one. You're too grown to be acting this way, ma'am. You're almost 40 years old and you sound like a 14 year old. You already said he's attractive enough to have sex with. You've agreed with me. So I don't, I don't see the issue. Well, and honestly, and honestly, ma'am, but honestly, ma'am, but let's be honest. Let's be honest, ma'am. This is really not even something you should be worried about. You ain't dating. I mean, I've entertained this, ma'am, but to be perfectly honest, you ain't dating. Ain't nobody trying to date you. Right? Well, I'm not, I'm not looking either. And it doesn't, I'm not, so why does, why does it matter? That's the point. I mean, I entertained it because it's a disagreement, but, but, but you, you ain't really, you don't sound like a woman that knows what a relationship is. You ain't been with nobody in years. So why are you even on these spaces? You ain't got a dog in this fight. Matter of fact, what kind of dog do you have? Yeah, exactly. It doesn't, it doesn't matter, man. You, okay. All right. You come into my restaurant and you want to tell me how to cook a steak and how a steak should be cooked and where I should get my beef from and how I should season and such and so forth. Then when I ask you, would you like to order a steak? You say, no, I'm a vegetarian. Why would you care what's going on in the steakhouse? You are not dating. You are not on the dating market. And we both know, I know from this conversation, you have not really had a dating life. This is an intellect. This is something, this is something to get your emotions involved because your life is empty. And that's what I need you ladies to start focusing on. This is, this is not helpful. Why the, why you can't get into a, a, a relationship with a human male to where you could fulfill your life and have something there to where you could pour your energy and efforts and emotions and emotional content into versus a guy on YouTube talking about something that has nothing to do with your life. At almost 40, this is not healthy. Do you understand what I'm saying? I understand exactly what you're saying. Um, I really wasn't even looking at the financial aspect of it. I was okay, I don't care about really- the financial, ma'am. I don't. Okay, how about the you aspect, ma'am? You're not dating. Why does this matter to you? It might be because I just felt like it was more involved with going to have sex with someone you're almost 40 years old and you're worried about who somebody may have sex with on a date and you ain't dated in years okay in all honesty ma'am let's do this um do you do you live in your own place yes all right do you live with anybody? No. Do you own any pets? No. Why have you not had a man, a boyfriend, a, a, a male suitor in years? Well, I just, um, um, in all honesty, I wasn't really ready for any type of relationship and you know in that time frame i just was um not necessarily just focus, focusing on me but more or less um uh, it was a bad situation that i was in before so i i couldn't focus on being in any type of relationship uh okay did you go and what did your therapist say 
Um, no, I haven't had any therapy. Oh, wait a minute. You're telling me the reason you don't have a man is because this whole I was focusing on me is just another bullshit placeholder that you women say to not deal with the feeling. And then you go back to, well, I couldn't I, I can't get a relationship. I'm not ready for one because of the trauma I had from a previous situation. And when I ask you what therapist you're working with to address the trauma, you tell me you don't have one. So you're your own. Per this is you need the therapy, man. Because, she, OK, ma'am, this is not normal. At almost 40 years old, I feel like I'm talking to a, a young lady in college or high school. And really, that's the extent of your relationships. Whatever happened is not my concern. The fact of the matter is you got all this emotional investment in, in an activity that you're not even participating in. You're a fem cell, a female incel. And just like male incels, you get all worked up because you're not having any outlet. You need human contact. You need relationship. Life is about people. And you're just sitting over there living by yourself until you die. Please get some help. Seriously. Because you're not supposed to, human beings are not supposed to be alone, ma'am. Especially not human females. Well, full disclosure, I really just recently moved on my own. I had been living at home with my, my I mother. Know. I know. I know. That's why I asked. I know. So think about this, Deanne. I must know something because I can talk to you like I know you. I'm not saying things that I'm saying to hurt women. It's not where it's coming from. I wouldn't have 5,000 people in here every night if I'm saying stuff to hurt people. I know you lived at home with your mother. I know there are things, but that's not normal. So you either get on with the process of living or you get on with the process of dying. But worrying about this three dates and this other kind of stuff is just a placebo for what's missing in your life. And that's human contact. Can you can you book a, an appointment with a therapist next week? They do first consultations free. Get online, look for mental health or life coach or something like that in your area. Just personal co life coach comma wherever you are and and look on the first page most people offer an initial consultation with a phone or in person free wouldn't cost you nothing can you do that yeah all right let me know what happens see me an yeah, email let me know what happens i want to know when your appointment is all right you have to tell me about what okay. happens i just want to know that you booked it <laughs> okay all right sis bye-bye bye bye all right so this is why I'm such a big proponent of therapy. Because as an adult, you can't reparent yourself. You have to get some help for these complex emotions. The, the boys that grow into men deal with this, and the woman, the girls that grow into women deal with this. The world does not care about our issues or traumas. Why it is what it is doesn't matter. We got to do something about it on our own. Uh, hello, Rena, Nina, Nina, Nina. All right, Nina, Arena. I don't know. Well, she's not responding. Uh. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I know. I know, I know, I know. Um, That was heavy. <clears throat> Hello? Hello? 
All right. Well, thank you, ladies. I I'm not going to bring y'all back in after that. Whew. I've seen a lot. <laughs> I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot. Um, there are a lot of therapists in Atlanta, and I've actually put this out on Instagram, and I'm going to put the call out again. If you are a, a, a therapist, a licensed therapist, psychologist, uh, spe especially if you're a black, black men, I, I need to hear from you. I need to hear from you. There, there are a lot of black women. I need to hear from you as well, but I need to hear from the black male, the black men who are clinicians in mental health. Because I get asked every day for recommendations. Uh, I'm going to ask some questions, though. I'm going to run you through some paces. Only about the business, though. Because this isn't a death sentence. That little bit right there, hell, it may, I don't know what the hell I just said. Uh, other than the goddamn truth. All you can do is say the truth, and what happened with the truth just happened. But you, you, I guarantee you, that little bit helped a lot of people. Yeah, I, I don't think I have anything else after that. I don't think I have anything else after that. I, I think I'm done. I think I'm done. Good night.